welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another Mighty Morphin Power Rangers video, and today it comes courtesy of my friends over at Super 7. This is a bit of an early look, just keep that in mind. These have started to ship out, so hopefully you should have yours in around the end of February, but this is the MMPR Ultimates White Ranger from the Wave that got kind of sort of canceled, right? Madam Woe, the White Tiger Zord, White Ranger was the only one that made it out alive. And in slipcase covers, you're not gonna get one for this box. It's just the box, same sort of dealy, same sort of artwork and all that jazz on the backside. You get the nice photo of the White Ranger. And then you get a little bit of a write-up from when Tommy was the Green Ranger and then he went to the White Ranger and it was a whole thing. That was the thing. When I was a little kid, I totally remember that. I had the newspaper clippings and Billy was shocked when he looked through the grating <laughs> to see them working on the White Ranger. And it really was this big thing, even though we kind of all knew it was going to be Tommy again, right? It was kind of like, oh, who's it going to be? Is it going to be this red herring? Is it going to be this guy? No, it, it was just Tommy, right? Jason, David, Frank. And a couple things, right? Let's talk about this because this was right around the end for me for Power Rangers with the movie. When that concluded, I was like, nah, I'm out. Moving on to bigger and better things. Here's a couple things to talk about. Tommy becomes the White Ranger. Okay, that's totally cool. He comes back. Green Ranger is no longer a thing, even though the Green Ranger is infinitely cooler than the White Ranger. So Tommy gets the sword, right? And then Zordon proceeds to tell everyone, hey, Jason, guess what? You're no longer the leader of the Power Rangers. Tommy is taking over. And that's when I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Jason's always the leader of the Power Rangers. And he didn't even care. He was just like, yeah, good for you, Tommy. This is, I'm taking the demotion, whatever. Oh, did I mention that out of nowhere, the sword starts talking because it's Saba and it's a mystical sword and it powers the tiger sword? That just kind of comes out of nowhere. Power Rangers is bat poop crazy. And that's why I like it. It making no sense. It's not supposed to be serious. It's just one freaking insane idea after another. And that's why all that footage that they chopped up from a completely different series works with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> kind of, sort of. It's absolutely bonkers. But that's why this is going to be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Super 7 MMPR Ultimates, Tommy Oliver, the White Ranger. So here's Tommy and all of the figure accessories out of the box. And it's a little bit light on the accessories, I will say, right? A lot of the MMPR Ultimates, they came with a ton of stuff. The White Ranger seemingly is the one with the least amount. So he does come with a ton of extra hands. All of them work properly with all the different accessories. You really won't have a problem. There's nothing to, oh, they changed that or, oh, that's different. It's just the same type of hands that we've seen throughout the Power Ranger line. Now, this is one of my favorite aspects is when they do the original coloring for the weapons that reminds you of the Bandai days with the flip heads. And I did not have the White Ranger flip head. That was a big bummer to me. I still don't have it to this day. I have a lot of other ones you'll see later in this vid, but he does hold it quite nicely. And there's not a whole lot of differentiation between the White Ranger for the flip head and then utilizing this. So basically it's the old fashioned Bandai version, right? But then you do get Saba and you get some good looking paint every which way. And it all is really nicely detailed well rendered. When it comes to the goldish yellow, and I will talk about more on that with the White Ranger himself coming up, but everything is very Saba. And you do get the appropriate hand to then hold it above his head as he's receiving it from Zordon. That is very cool. And as far as weapon storage goes for old Takan Saba, yes, it will slip right into his sheath and it looks good. It's pretty solid. Everything works a-okay. Now, with Saba, and this is why I love this MMPR line, is that the head comes off, right? And you can swap it out with an alternate head portrait for Saba, to say that, with the laser beam eyes. Now, in the show, it looks to be like a white laser, although for whatever reason I remember this, I can't find it, you can help me out if that's true, but I would think that the red laser eyes kind of works a little bit better. Also, a floating stand for Saba, right? That would've been kind of cool, so you could just float 
next to the White Ranger, but just go very easy with the laser beam eyes. They're not overly brittle, but you never know, right? Just saying. Now, why is this a standout? Why is this cool? No one's ever done this. No one has had the swap out Saba heads with the laser beams and whatnot. And again, I would have loved just to have a stand for Saba just to float around. That would have been a nice touch. Could have been a little extra something in the box there, Super 7. Just saying. Now, you do get the Sword of Light. There's lots of swords in Power Rangers. They all do various things. However, the Sword of Light has to do with the power transfers of the red, black, and yellow ranger and Tommy wields it. It's, an, it's a whole thing. But it looks great. Again, painted well. Nicely sculpted. Take special note of the gold on this sword. I will be bringing this up later. But overall, it's just a nice accessory. Has the little Power Ranger lightning bolt crafted in at the top. And yes, with all the hands, you can do the whole posing out that you see from that particular episode. And it does look good. Hold it above his head, doing the pose. The sword really never came up again with all the other power transfers. Anyways, I'm happy to say that one of the biggest problems with the MMPR Ultimates has been the head portraits, the unmask. I'm not a huge fan of displaying Power Rangers with their whole mask soft kind of thing. It's kind of dumb. Anyways, these are so much better. Very much a vast improvement to what we have seen before. They are also appropriately scaled, whereas some of the ones that we have gotten, the heads have been ridiculously bulbous or just off. They're just off-putting. This is a nice homage to Jason David Frank. And with this more solemn, more smiling sort of Tommy Oliver head, that looks great as well. And again, if you want to pose him out on your shelf holding the helmet with this head portrait, that does look pretty darn good. That is one of the best improvements I have seen for the Super 7 Power Rangers Ultimates line. And just like Billy the Blue Ranger, they now have officially the best head portraits going on. Both of them match up. Both of them have appropriate skin tones. Everything lines up. The eyes are great. That's a home run right there. And just to show you what we've gotten before. Now, I thought this may have been the same head portrait. It's not. The new White Ranger one is a little bit bigger. Perhaps they redesigned it, recrafted. That's probably what I think is going on. But it's largely the same, except that they've improved the skin tone. And it is a little bit of a, a longer, bigger type head portrait that really works. What's come before with prior MMPR Ultimates, they've kind of had a more cartoony, comic book, animation style sort of deal. Which is not a bad thing, but didn't always work, let's be honest. Now, he does come with a ton of Dragon Balls, right? I'm sorry, the White Tiger Zord Orbs. <laughs> and you get seven of them, don't lose them. They're essentially marbles, right? So they do the clickety-clack and all that, and they got the nice symbols on them every which way. If you remember, it's in the Tiger Zord. He pops those out, throws them into the little cannon, and that's what the Tiger Zord barfs out onto the enemies. And yes, the White Ranger does hold them nicely. Now that we're not getting the Tiger Zord, it's kind of a moot accessory. But hey, at least again, that's a nice accessory to put in the box. Now, the White Ranger. Remember when he dropped down in that episode? <laughs> Crazy, right? Here's one thing about this figure. It's pretty good. I have to say, again, in keeping with the MMPR Ultimates, if you're not a fan of MMPR Ultimates, no, this is not going to be the figure for you. Obviously. I like these figures because I just pose them out minusculely on my shelf. There's not a whole heck of a lot of articulation with Super 7 figures. And that is something that with the price point, I see people being frustrated with, right? Not only the price points, but oftentimes there are QC issues. There is paint difficulties. There is problems with the articulation being loose. That is something Super 7 has to work on through and through. At least in the case of this White Ranger, they've managed to fix all that. Minus the paint. The paint is going to be the biggest guffaw in this once again. And of course, figures will vary, right? Mass produced figures, basically. When you have paint problems, it's usually a given, right? You can expect that with any type of action figure these days. But Super 7 has had multiple problems over the years again and again and again. And this White Ranger has some paint probs towards the five, six, seven, eight count, right? Little things here and there. Also, with the bands on the arm, right? I totally thought, mm, those are a little bit high, right? 
it really does vary. They actually did it fine, right? I'm not gonna complain too much. It's just that in prior action figures I've gotten over the years, usually the bands are more towards the wrist. No, that's not a problem at all. And yes, it differentiates itself from various White Rangers as you'll see later on in the video. So no problems with that. But the main gripe is the yellow. I think it's a little bit too yellowish gold as opposed to a nice gold. A really reflective gold would have been nice, like the one that you see on the belt. Now, in looking at press photos of the old show, Yes, you could say he goes back and forth, but he's always been a more gold gold, not a bright yellow gold, and that's where I think this figure misses the mark a bit. If you look at the gold on the Sword of Lights, that's the type of gold that I would have preferred, right? It's kind of like with the Dragon Shield, the Green Ranger, and they gave it to the Red Ranger, and they improved the gold. That's the gold I want to see. Again, like the belt buckle, it's different. So that yellowish gold, I'm not gonna say it's off-putting, but it's definitely not correct. And you can say all day, oh, it's wrong, this is, but does it look good for what it is? It's totally fine. For me, it's more the paint props that you see. The white fares a lot better than, let's say, some of the gold aspects, but that, again, when it adds up, when you look at the price point, when you look at all that, that's one of the aspects. And then plus right here with the ab crunch, right? I'm not a huge fan of the MMPR ab crunch, let's be honest. But when you have the new tiger shield on him, right? And then you have that cut, it looks weird. It really does. The articulation, as I said, is gonna be the same. Although on mine, when you put the arms all the way to the side, it has this mega crease in the arm. Now, is that a huge problem? It doesn't look good. Is it something you're gonna go, hey, on your shelf, what is that awful crease? No, unless you have the arms going like that. And again, minimal articulation. Can't stress that enough. So that's another thing people get upset about, right? $55 price point. They go, oh, the articulation should be a lot more. At least the figures look good. Oftentimes just sitting there on your shelf and you got a ton of accessories, which I appreciate from the show. Because again, in collecting Power Rangers over the years, Super 7 has done stuff no other company has done. And that is why they have the best Power Ranger line in terms of adapting it to the television show. All the show specific accessories is what I appreciate seeing for my toy lines, right? And utilizing the cartoon TMNT line, once again, in collecting Ninja Turtles all these years, Power Rangers all these years, it's certainly a breath of fresh air to have show specific accessories. Finally, right? Now, in putting the White Ranger with the rest of your Power Ranger lineup from Super 7, it looks pretty darn cool. And that's my main thing about these. I set them on my shelf and forget them. That's how I choose to display Power Rangers. And if you are one of those people that love a multitude of articulation, Super 7 is not the company for you. But there are tons of other companies making Power Ranger figures that have a lot more articulation than these. Hasbro, Mezco, Bandai. You could even go back in the past and grab those. Some of them are more articulated than these. But the idea that these just sit on my shelf and look good, that's what I want some for. And for the Green Ranger to the White Ranger, as I said, Green Ranger will always be infinitely more cool than the White Ranger. But it is fun to have these on the shelf. But I think of the Green Ranger being evil and all that. And you can have him battling the forces of evil maybe slice Lord Zed's staff in half, turn it back to the snake, you get the idea. And then looking at what's come before and to seeing the White Ranger of now. I have a, a lot of White Rangers, a lot more than I thought I did. When I was going through my collection, I'm like, oh man, I, oh, there's another one, right? So you get to see the various looks, the various toys throughout all of these years. Some got it right, some took liberties, some stand out more than others, it's all a various grab bag of different companies, different interpretations. And yes, as you can see, Super 7s does stand out because it has a little bit of different yellowish gold, right? But I think the gold that really nailed it was the recent White Ranger flip heads, right? From Hasbro, there you go. But to be honest with all the White Rangers over the years, I'll always remember this one. This one is my fave. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Super 7 MMPR Ultimates the White Ranger. And again, thanks to my friends over at Super 7 for sending this out for the purposes of this video. Overall, it's a pretty solid Power Ranger lineup. It's 
based on the show. Kind of, sort of based off the original Japanese show as well, which again, we've never really seen done. The toys have always been a mishigash of different ideas, making them toyetic. These are from the show, and that's what I appreciate. The head portraits over the years, they haven't been great. It's nice to see the White Ranger definitely having an improvement on that. They need to improve on the paint. The articulation, they could do what they want with the articulation, but the price points mixed with the problems we have seen in the past, they really have to work on that because with what we've been seeing with the various sales, right, it shows that people do want them, but at the price point they are now, it's kind of a moot thing. So you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything MMPR Ultimates. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, fingers crossed, we do get to see a continuation of this line. Power Rangers has all been kind of up and down for various companies. But in Super 7's case, I am looking forward to Bulk and Skull. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.